Hi, I'm James Just, and this is Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Jason Quintero and Michael Warnkin. Um, so recently, Obamacare has been ruled unconstitutional by the by the appeals court, not the Supreme Court. Federal appeals makes, court. So it's all this individual mandate is up in the air. You are the more loyally one of the group here, Michael. Why don't you give us your kind so of opinion I, on this? So I forget how many years ago, but um, I think it was a good six or seven years ago. Obamacare hit uh, NFIB versus Sebelius was the case, and it went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and it was the first stab at challenging whether or not uh, you know this this the statute which you know was to mandate that people buy health care was constitutional and the supreme court by a thinnest of thin margins five to four said uh yeah it is so since then uh i think trump on his own said this individual mandate he apparently on his own could just strike it and did <laughs> and that kind of took the guts out of uh, uh obamacare and and as soon as he did that somebody else brought a lawsuit against it uh and i believe it was a texas court texas judge said yeah i, th I think it's done Naturally, the people who want Obamacare put, uh, kept in place, they took it to the Fifth Circuit. Uh, and the Fifth Circuit said, it's out. No doubt this will likely go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, however, I believe that, uh, I, if I could say it, you know, libertarians rejoice. You know, I mean, the idea that one, that mm -hmm. you should be forced to, to buy health care. I think, I think, you know, force is, force is problematic for libertarians. And two, uh, wow, it's another thing that the government's taking control of. Uh, probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my question is, what role does this have for the California mandate? Is it going, because California now has Oh, no, a no, no, no. This is everywhere. So, so, the, so the California mandate is now questionable, whether it's legal. Yeah. Uh, well, see, so, so, um, I'm not sure who's taking it. I guess, in theory, the U.S. Attorney's Office would be fighting it, but uh, uh, I, I guess Trump could tell him no, but, but uh, they have one more appeal. So the trial court uh, said it's unconstitutional. They took it to the three-judge uh, uh, circuit court, the Fifth Circuit, and they said it's unconstitutional. They have to now ask for the U.S. Supreme Court to consider it, and, and I almost think the Supreme Court almost has to take it because the Supreme Court had priorly said that it is constitutional and now things have been tweaked a little bit. I guess they could sit on their hands and say, you know, the, the Fifth Circuit carries, but I, I don't, you know, I think the rest of us are going to want to see why. So the Supreme Court is probably going to take it up and, and, uh, and I, think, I, think, I think there's a good chance they're going to say it's out. So. Well, I, I hope the Supreme Court takes it up and at least so we get some kind of resolution to the thing one way or the other. Is that kind of... You know, we as libertarians, we don't like the we don't like the force, and we don't like the thing. But what we actually need is stability, one way or the other. Do you like your health care plan, or do you like Obamacare? I hate my health care plan. Uh -uh. I can't believe it. Um, but do you like Obamacare better? <laughs> no, not oh, okay. thrilled about it. Not thrilled about this at all. I, I think that um, I would like to see this go away. I would like to see competition among companies again. Yeah. Give me some competition among insurance companies. That's what I, well, want. I think one of the things Trump has actually, one of the handful of things Trump has done decently, as has got open from my kind of perspective, is he's now made it, he's going to mandate that uh, hospitals produce their charge list. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So, so you don't end up paying $40 for a single uh, aspirin, right? Right. Um, right. So, yeah. so, so, or if you do, at least you know about it. Yeah. You look at it and say, what the hell is this? Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, you're not, so you've got one insurance company pays $100 for an aspirin, another insurance company pays $3. And if you're the, and, yeah. and if you as a cash payer, you end up paying four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And so all that can actually start to go away. And then and then we can actually start once we get all the dust yeah. from that settled. Yeah, and, and, and what's you know, what's most interesting to me is this is back in the courts, but when Trump first got elected, that was one of the first things he did, you know, was sort of to call the Republicans out. And he said, Well, when Obama was president, you didn't seem to have any problem passing a bill that would get rid of Obamacare. And gosh, it went to Obama and what did he do? Yeah, he you know, he vetoed it, right? So you got a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and, and a Republican uh, uh, president, and, and yet they couldn't seem to put a bill together. To, and so I think it was really important for Trump to, you know, not only call out, you know, fake news, but then he's, uh, you know, you got fake Republicans, right, right. that are that are obviously, you know, right. okay, so you guys are the low cost leaders, and you're saying you don't believe in more taxes, and yet, you know, we've got Republican majorities all the way through, and you can't quite put a bill together to, you know, and, and Trump called them out, which their districts, and you know, and so this is the culmination, is is you know, you know, I mean, old, you know, Trump's had Trump's, you know, Trump said he'd get rid of it. Well, he did. And, 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 you know, you know, mind you, we, you know, there's going to be one more appeal, but yeah, and, and I mean, and, and for liberty and all liberty lovers, absolutely, let's get rid of, um, let's get rid of Obamacare. So. Yeah, these kind of government mandates are never a good idea. They, they don't actually end up working long term. And for me, the worst part of it is you're forcing people into a relationship that they don't want. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, it, you know, if, yeah. if someone wants to die at 60 because he didn't get health care, that should be his right. It's, you know, whether sure. whether we think it's sad, okay. Well, but, but I'm more concerned about the guy who, because, you know, he's in a government plan, can't get the can't get the uh, the, the services that he needs that, well, you know, because he's mandated to use government, you know, government help. Uh, right? Someone who was forced into California government care because of Obamacare, and I can't get a cataract surgery for nine months because... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just basic things take yeah. for flipping ever to get done. No, Trump's, Trump's really attacked this, and, and so, yeah. It's, yeah, it's one of the handful of things. You know, you go, oh, I don't but, like the guy, but at least he's dealing with this health care thing. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing here is, you know, Obamacare, you know, has been declared unconstitutional, so it looks like it's going away. And, I mean, that's, like, the biggest thing. So, and as we're talking about Trump and in spine, you know, I, the Inspector General's report on the FBI scandal revealed a, a reveal of scandal of historic magnitudes not just in the FBI, but also in the U.S. media, how the U.S. media covered the whole scandal, or I guess technically didn't cover the whole FBI's sky, spying scandal. Jason, have you followed this at any? I, I follow fake news ever since Trump started talking about fake news. I was thinking, yeah, finally somebody's saying it, fake news. I know it's been there. Finally someone's saying it. Thank you very much. And as far as this uh, spying scandal, FBI spying scandal, um, yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's a scandal going on. Um, well, I, 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 I like that some is, is getting revealed. Yeah. If Trump wasn't president, and yeah. here's the oh, thing, yeah. you know, I, I'm applying Trump for this because if he wasn't president, this would never come up. Yeah, yeah. Hillary would have hid this. Oh, yeah. Obama would have hid this. There's no way this would come out. Yeah. Well, so it, thank God that someone's in office who's going to out this crap. Well, the point of it is, is, you know, what is this, the fourth estate? I, I, you know, I think the media is the fourth estate, and, and you know, I, I mean, it's, you know, so we're talking also about the deep state. So you got the fourth estate whose job really is to watch the deep state, and, and you know, what the article in the Inspector General reports more or less suggesting is that it wasn't. In fact, you know, it seems like they were pretty copacetic with each other. Yeah. You know, the, the whole idea that you've got people that are, that are engaged in deep state, you know, actions, and, and the media is not only not talking about it, but, but actively turning a blind right. eye and, and almost in some ways promoting it. Yeah, we, it seems to me like we got this, the media had this interesting kind of dichotomy where the, first they said there wasn't a deep state, it didn't really exist, and now it exists, but they're really looking out for our interest. Yeah, the, the, that one guy, <laughs> I, forget, I forget that one guy the other day came out and he said, thank goodness there's a deep state. And it's like, and for the rest of us, well, you're about the only one because I don't think they've done me any favors. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's, it seems it's interesting that they were interesting that there was no deep state and now all of a sudden there, was, it, it, there is one, but it's really out looking for our own good. Well. Can anything that's that secretive be for our own good? Well, and, and I guess it, it's for the good of the person who supports the deep state. Yeah. If they're getting, if they're making money, if they're getting famous, if they're being taken care of, they want a deep state. Yeah. You know, if you're on top of the pyramid, you want the pyramid. But that's how it works. Yeah, and, and yeah. what the uh, Inspector General's report is basically saying is that, you know, the media appears to be highly compromised. And, and uh, you know, if the media is not free, if they, you know, you know, have the proverbial gun at their head and, you know, they're being, uh, you know, they're being blocked, let us say, from, from telling this. And then, I, you know, that's, that's ex you know, that's extremely concerning. You know, we're down to Orwell 1984 and, and everything else that we, you know, and, and I guess the real truth is we're right in the middle of it. And, and you know, and, and apparently the Inspector General said so. So, uh, well, does this make citizen journalism on YouTube and on Facebook mm -hmm. and on Twitter, does that make it even more important that we actually encourage this? Rather, rather than what's the ongoing of censorship, rather it's we fight Facebook, we fight YouTube from this. Well, that, that was um, uh, the case that I, everybody hates is Citizens United versus uh, uh, the SEC. And uh, one of the things that they said in the case was that, that uh, it's, it's, it's become very blurry as to who is the media. I mean, you know, when we grew up, you know, you know I grew up outside, outside of Sacramento, and I mean, I think there were, what, six channels total, you know, yeah. so NBC, CBS, uh, ABC. ABC, there was no Fox, right. you know, and, 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 and so, you know, and, and that was the media. And today, if you can put your own Facebook page up, you, you can get some time on a public access television show, then you are the media. You are part of mm -hmm. it. And, 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 and darn it, you know, because, you know, CNN isn't telling us what, what right. you know, what, what is true. Absolutely. No, thank God for the rise of social media. Yes. And it's funny because, uh, you know, Google is very left-leaning. But yeah. fortunately, there is a Google, so yeah. people like libertarians and independents can rise up and say, no, that's not true. What CNN just said is absolutely not true. Yeah. They're aligned, and here's my evidence. Here. Yeah, yeah. It's and very isn't, that we have. Yeah, isn't that the actual real reason of the freedom of the press? 
the freedom of the press was actually not meant for news gathering organizations. It was meant for individuals right. to reproduce and distribute their yeah. ideas. It was not meant for, for news. It was just meant for the average person. News people actually get it, but it mm -hmm. not, they're not, it's not exclusive to them. Yeah. And as, it seems to me that we've kind of forgotten that, that we think that the news media, that the press is, is the press and not it's the actual printing press was what the freedom was for. It was right. the yeah. actual reproduction of your ideas. I gotta say, I spend more time looking at different characters, I say characters on YouTube, expressing their opinions than I do watching network TV. Yeah. I don't watch network news. I just don't do it no more. And cable news, very rarely. I get most of my information from uh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you're not you know? supposed to. Yeah, you know, I remember years ago when Sarah Palin was running as the vice presidential candidate. Uh, one of the questions is, where do you get your news on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, and as, and as a Republican, what are you going to say? Well, I read the New York Times. You know, I mean, you know, right. you know, I, but but I mean, you know, there's almost an aspect. Well, so so you get your news from uh, Facebook, huh? And it's like, well, sort of. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they know the articles that I'm looking for, and they're feeding them to me. So I'm looking for, you know, I mean, people obviously get accused of being in quote unquote the echo chamber, but I mean. You know, prior to that, we were, you know, we were in feeding farms where, you know, you were told, and it was ABC, CBS, NBC, that they were lockstep. They told everybody the same thing. Right. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I remember when I was a little kid, three or four channels, whatever it was, it was the same thing over and over and over yeah. again. So, I mean. Yeah. And when I get my news from Facebook, I actually don't get my news from Facebook. What I get is I get my news from KCRA oh, or, yeah. or, or yeah, a TV channel are, in, in New Orleans or, yeah. or someplace in Miami. Or, you know, I'm getting it from news stations or newspapers or magazines, but those the, the information is coming to me through Facebook. Yeah, through and, 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 and it does look like, at least for a little while, uh, the various quote unquote, you know, we all pray at the altar of the algorithm at this point in time, you know, and so they spend all that time trying to figure out what you want and then they curate, you know, and then, you know, the real problem was uh, when uh, Twitter was doing the quote unquote shadow banning, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, so you're following, you know, maybe you'd be following Trump and maybe you'd be following Nancy Pelosi, right? And then, then all of a sudden each one of them would tweet and then they'd decide, well, we don't want that to spread, you know? So, so um, you know, and, and in a lot of ways, uh, uh, Twitter and, and Facebook are now curating these things. So, so even though we have these individuals, they still have a lot of power as to, as you know, I, I mean, you know, who they let through. If, if you say something, you know, you say the wrong thing on Twitter, you're mm -hmm. done. If you could say, if on Twitter you said you liked, uh, you know, that Olympic athlete before he became a woman, you're done. <laughs> you know, right. so, so, yeah. Well, and the more I hear these things, the more I start following Twitter. I have a Twitter account. But I haven't used it in over a year yeah, I, because I, I know what Twitter yeah. has started to do. But I think and I learned that I didn't learn that news from NBC, CBS, you know, CNN. I didn't learn it from there. I learned it from other social media yeah. sites. Well, you're, if you're on Twitter, you're, 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 you should be there for fighting. That's what Twitter. Oh about. yes, yeah. <laughs> Twitter, uh, Twitter wars. So. Right. Well, Twitter used to be for marketing, and now it's just become a. Just a storm yeah. for it's angry twelve year olds. Yeah, you yeah, know, or, or, fifty or, uh, angry. Or, or well, I'm twelve, but you know I'm fifty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but I guess I'm not angry. Maybe that's the difference. Don't be angry. <laughs> so actually, let's we'll skip uh, forward. Most Americans. There's a su survey done in USA Today where most Americans think their rights are at risk. I think ninety-two percent people of percent of people have thought that their rights are somewhere at risk. Um, but will they change how they vote, Jason? <laughs> um. <laughs> With the rise of social media, I think they will. And I think they are changing how they vote. You know, I've been hearing about, um, and I don't know if this is completely true, but I heard the black vote and the Latino vote for Trump, the percentages are rising. Staggering. Rising. The, it's yeah, staggering. Huge, huge numbers. Now, if these people, if we had the same um, uh, media outlets, uh, I'm sorry, what's the topic? I don't want to get off topic, but are the rights at risk? Yeah. Their, their rights are at risk, and they only know that because they have more media outlets to look at. And so they're more aware, and thank God they are. So I think that um, they will change how they vote. Uh, they have more options to look at. Well, I, I, I've watched a lot of presidential campaigns, and we're obviously in the middle of one, and, and uh, this one's so staggeringly different than every, you know, it's obviously the, the Trump effect. You yeah. Know? Um, uh, so, you know, when we're talking about rights, we're, all, we're talking about, you know, let's, let's be honest, gun rights, the ability to protect mm -hmm. yourself. You know, we were talking about them earlier, the ability to petition for redress, uh, you know, and, and, you know, obviously each one of the rights, I, you know, my thing on representation, I'm not sure that rights can exist when the, rep, when the districts get too big. But I think in this day and age, you know, between all the, all the issues that are being brought up, you know, uh, uh, 
I got to be honest, Trump, why, you know, basically wiping out all the taxes, you know, you, you know, um, because I think there were just such a morass of taxes that, that, that people who were in office could raise taxes and we'd think it was a good thing. And now, and now it's obvious, like, you know, even when they're saying, well, we'll, we'll do this tax and, and, and we'll protect these people with it. People are like, well, yeah, that's another tax that we don't want it. And I think people are like, yeah. And, and, and so, uh, people's votes are changing. I think, I think as Trump's come in and attack these things and, and, and you, know, you know, really change uh, the landscape of how things are working, that's had the effect of making people reconsider what they support, what they're really, re real believe. And I, and, I, and I think when the left runs out and says, oh, we need gun control, I think people are like, uh, hmm, yeah, maybe not. You maybe know? not. Yeah. Well, and it, and is it just here? Because we're just recently, Boris Johnson won a, a surprisingly landslide victory in the UK, which is essentially a, another referendum on Brexit. Yeah. And so the the political establishment is actually on the run and kind of all over the place. There's riots in France. Over, yeah. And and now why they're asked that? Well, they're they're kind of strange. They're asking for more government when government is failing them. But at least they're are. But, but they're, at least they're mad at the uh, political establishment, yeah. right? So. So we've got the people are mad at the political establishment all over the world, and so that might, I think might be the good sign that people are finally starting to realize that it's the political, political, political and media establishment that is the real enemies. Right. Well, with the ease of communication these days, it's easier yeah. to figure this stuff out and easier to work with others. Yeah. Uh, also, when it comes to America, you know, there's almost there's two places. It's you're either California and New York or everywhere else right. and 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 new york and california right now are the holdouts to know we'll, we'll, we'll prove that this can work you know yeah. we just need to we, we just need to uh you know split the prop 13 rolls we just need to you know get another half cent sales tax we just need right you need to keep <laughs> rising taxes let me keep raising taxes and yeah. i will take care of you well but people realizing this is a bunch of bull we'll talk about raising taxes how about raising minimum wage increase here in sacramento there are restaurants long-term restaurants are closing their doors because they can't afford the new minimum wage increase yeah yeah uh I, th I think I'd said at another point in time when they did the half sa a cent sales tax uh, increase. You know, who did it hammer? Uh, uh, car sales. You know, so what? All of a sudden, we lost half the half the car dealerships here. We lost the jobs that went with them, and we didn't get the revenue in the end. So, so you know, these triggers that all these government officials, whether local or state government, they say, okay, well, we went, we got our problem. Okay, you know, you know, uh, you know, one-legged toad, or you know, something or another. That they want oh, we got to we got to we got to protect that or fix that. You know, so now you got to pay for it, right? Okay, well then, what are you gonna what are you gonna what are you gonna tax? You know, and, and, and so, you know, and so, okay, well, people aren't getting enough money. Now, you know, inflation comes, you know, from different ways. If they're saying the cost of housing is too high, well, maybe that our supply of housing isn't high enough. Or maybe we've made it too hard to build, you know, and, and, and so you're treating a symptom by saying, okay, well, what we're going to do is going to raise, you know, salaries by, by forcing minimum wage up. Okay, well, just like, you know, raising the sales tax killed uh, a lot of the car sales here. Well, guess what? Restaurants. Well, there's also was no adjustment of the other taxes and other costs that are associated with with a payroll, like a payroll tax. Yeah. So it's not just that the minimum wage, because it's not like just that you're paying the guy an extra dollar an hour. It's that you're also paying all the extra taxes and all the extra, yeah, and, and all the extra what the uh, workman's comp fees, anything, oh, yeah. anything that goes the along mandates. with anything that goes along with that base rate also goes up. So it's not just this, okay, well, we're going to raise it right, but we're going to adjust tax rates and everything so that every extra penny these employers are spending are just going to go to the employer. No, the government's still going to get their, their bigger right. cut too. And, and the other problem, the other problem, the immediate thing, I, I mean, I don't even have the stats for it, but I can tell you this is true. It's, it's the mom and pop shops, you know, we're always pushing for the little guy, you know, that, you know, they're the ones that are going to, you know, it's, it's TGA Fridays. They're going to handle this better now anybody you know they can they can resort okay well and, and then you know here's the real truth on the other side mechanization right yeah well mcdonald's can afford to put in yeah, kiosks, a kiosk, and, and kiosks. Yeah. the mom and pop shop can't right, and right. So, yeah so who are we hurting we're hurting the um low wage earner yeah. we're hurting him he cannot feed for his family anymore even though it was on a, a small minimum wage and he had two jobs maybe he's doing the best that he can yeah but give him that opportunity to do the best he can and rise up now you just took his job away and and the real truth is and, and i'll get in trouble for saying it but, but we got to say it right it's so, being recorded michael yep so 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 uh it's usually the government employee contracts are written in such a way that it's a mul their salaries are a multiple of the prevailing wage. So it's not even the, the the guy, you know, and I mean, you know, if some guy has 40 hours a week and he's making, let's say, $12 an hour, and you're going to push it up to 13, and all of a sudden his boss is like, I either have to fire you, you work fewer hours, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the government employees are pushing up the prevailing wage because their salary is based on that, 
So that's what's really going on in a lot of these instances. Well, it's not, not just that. Um, freelancers have recently sued the state over oh. AB5. Ah, Can yes. the gigacoplics be, a, be diverted? This is actually the same thing. I am a gig worker, in full disclosure, so this is directly affecting my bottom line. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, can it actually be, are these lawsuits, and we're, we're turning to your lot today here, Michael. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, so, so you'll hear it on TV every so often, you know, you'll have a law professor and he'll refer to the case of Lochner versus New York and things like that. And there are cases where, you know, uh, in, in, in that instance uh, and thereabouts in New York, they said that, uh, that uh, they made a law that made, made it so there's no overtime. You know, or they mandated overtime. You know, and there were a bunch of butchers that say, okay, well, now that you put overtime where we hit, you know, the eighth or tenth hour, now, you, now, the, now the employer is faced, forced to pay us time and a half. Well, you took that, that person's ability to negotiate for more money away or more time. Say, I'm willing to work a 14 hour shift. I need a 14 hour shift to, to pay my rent, you know, and now all of a sudden you, you've mandated the, the company you work for does time and a half, you know. So, so you're getting into, you know, messing with these market, uh, market aspects. And, it does seem odd, you know. I mean, I mean, so so we have a, a minimum wage, you know, law where it says I have to pay somebody something. What if I go to my neighbor and say, you know, to his kid, I'll tell you what, here's ten bucks, mow my lawn, right? You know, and all of a sudden, you know, now I'm committing a crime, <laughs> you know. Right. And now now they're saying, well, you know, you've got these gig things, whether you know whether you know your job may be you know driving a car like an Uber or, or a Lyft, and and now all of a sudden Lyft has to hire you. And it's like, but, but you're, you know, and some people want that, you know, maybe, you know, but then again, you know, if all of a sudden Lyft has to hire you, well, then there are certain things you have to, you might have to have a nine to five job, you know, where some people said, no, I can make the same amount between three and five in the afternoon and, and I'd be running around just wasting gas otherwise. So, you know, I, that the fact that state came in and made this mandate, you know, no one asked me, and I don't know if any of them talked to you, but they wanted no, it. And, no, and, I, and, and Uber and Lyft are huge. I tried to talk to these people about it. I, I, it's not just for me as, you know, as, I'm a gig worker, but it's not just us the gig workers, not just the app workers. It's also truck drivers and freelance yeah. riders. And it, yes. it's, it's, it's affecting a whole string of people who were living the life the way they wanted. Yeah, I, yeah. Vox, VOX. I was just about to mention yeah, that. go ahead. Yeah, and Vox was encouraging. Vox was supporting this law. That, that right-wing that right yeah. media outlet. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Vox, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vox supported this. Vox wanted this. Part of the left. And, and months later, Vox is laying off freelance Their own reporters. people. Their own people yes. who reported, who blessed this thing. Now they're losing their jobs. Yes. Yeah, and I know, well, like hearing our gig workers, we're losing. And moving to red states. <laughs> and voting there. Right. <laughs> so they can screw that one up too. Yeah. Well, and it's it's hurting a lot of people because it's changing the economics of the of the gig worker system. Like I now have trouble. Amazon used to you could work two, maybe even three, what they call blocks a day. But now Amazon has made it so you can essentially only work one. Uh huh. And so Sad. we've you've lost half your income. And so now all these drivers are going onto other platforms. Yeah, yeah. And so now as you know, economics, when you have more drivers, the the rates go down. Yeah. The rates that they're paying me are for other things I do yeah. are now going down because there's more drivers in the system. Yeah, no, so, so I mean, you know, you know, as we go over these topics that we've touched upon, I mean, so many times we're looking at, well, government put their foot in that one and, you know, let's just all sit back and wait for it to blow up, right? You right. know? <laughs> that's all screwed up all over again. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of the annoying thing is because we've all pointed out that these directions, that that's going to have bad unintended consequences. Yeah. That's going to have bad unintended consequences. We've all been saying this the whole time for years. Years. And, and what's, what's worse is you can almost predict what's going to happen. You know, you know what's going to happen here? Yep, that's right. going to blow up there. Smart you know? people can see it coming from a mile away. Mile away. You know, yeah. so I, I'm always confused why people don't see this. I mean, I can't be a guru, can I? You know, I'm not a genius. Well, how come I can see this, but other people can't? I don't get it. Don't so well, let's try and see if we can find a topic that doesn't involve laws or the government. Is it time to start teaching young people how to not be so offended, Jason? <laughs> Yes, yes. Hello, parents. You know, stop teaching your kids stop being so damn offended all the time. A wuss. Oh, a, a wuss. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but the problem is we have media outlets who are pushing. You have to be offended. You have to be offended. If you're offended, then you get something for free. You have free. power. If you're offended, you get power. Yeah. Uh, I and saw the shock factor. Right. I saw something the other day. That said, "How do you get what you want?" And what do you say if you want, if you want something? And you say, "I'm offended." Not please, but yeah. I'm offended. You know, um, how we teach people, how, how we turn this around, I don't know. And, 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 and on the other side, too, then, then, then uh, we're nullifying people. I, you know, I, I finished my degree, you know, as much, you know, advanced age, my bachelor's degree at UC Santa Barbara, and, and I got to see firsthand these safe spaces. 
So on one hand, we're teaching people to be super offended, but then, you know, oh my gosh, you know, you know, you can't handle yourself. So here, let's take you over and, 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 and put you in a box and, you know, and, and you know, it's just, I, people aren't learning yeah. how to be people. Well, I, mean, I, I gotta say, I, I have two, I have 15 year old and a 19 year old. And I see them laugh at the snowflakes who are crying and oh, yeah. crying all the time. They're laughing at people, and I'm encouraging them. I'm saying, don't be that person. Yeah. Don't melt down every time somebody offends you. Suck it up. Yeah. You know, tough it up a little bit. And I see a lot of their friends and a lot of other people. So I have some hope that young people will not be little babies all the time. And sure, they might laugh at the person who's melting down like a little snowflake. Tough. Tough. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of this stuff, you know, this this touches on Jordan Peterson. I don't really watch him a lot, but he, you know, he's up in Canada where they don't really have a First Amend Amendment where right. where apparently if if someone said, uh, you know, they're not really a man, they're a woman, you you have to, or else you're committing a crime, you know, and 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 you know, there's there's just so much of that, and and, and we've really gone down to the extre extremities of this point where you know the victim culture. Uh, uh, years ago, I, I remember when Colin Powell, it was uh, George W. Bush was president, and, and he referred to somebody as a Chinaman. You know, and I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and he had to apologize, and then and then they stayed offended a little longer, and then so he he apologized oh, again, again, you know, and right. I guess it was over. But I mean, you know, you can, you know, people will manufacture how upset they're going to be, and and then we're in a victim culture, and that's um, that's kind of the thing is this we're creating we're creating victims, and as someone who has dealt with a lifelong anxiety disorder, I mean, literally ten years ago I could not leave my house, leaving my house was was difficult, and now I'm here on TV, I didn't get out of that by making myself a victim. Yeah. It's not, you you, you, you cannot, gotta face your problem. You cannot blame the world. Now this is true, like, you know, there's things the world could have not done that would have made my life easier, but ultimately it was my responsibility to and to pick myself back up. You know, luckily I had help from my friends and my family right. who were able to support me along this along my path. And a lot of people don't get that, and so we wanna be clear, it's not always an easy path. But we cannot allow ourselves to become victims because and, then you're just stuck in a victim mentality. And I think, and I think part of the problem is government, you know, with one more of their policies, is you know, and, you know, empowered people to to take the victim role on a lot of these things. So, yeah. Well, if but, if being a victim gives you power, then why then, wouldn't you then, choose then, to be then, a victim? Then scream as loud as you can and go for it. So right. yeah. But in reality, the person who is not a victim uh, succeeds more. Don't yeah. be a victim; you will be more successful, or remain a victim and live in, you know, a pathetic life. Yeah. That's, That's actually a, a good thing to end our, our year on. Thank don't you. be a victim. Don't be a freaking victim. <laughs> don't be a victim. So as we end our day, I want, that's about all the time we will have. I would like to thank our guests, Michael Warnkin for appearing, and thank Jason you. Quintero. Thanks for showing up. Thank and thanks for ending the year with me here. Yeah. And I would, for information on the topics we discuss, you can visit our website, libertariancounterpoint.com. What's your, your, your website? Uh, SOJ51. So I'll try and put that on the website when we get there. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like, subscribe, and if you want to, the notification button. You can start looking for us on your, social, on your favorite social media platforms. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, thank you for watching this year, and please remember, love everybody.